This video is the part 2 of Wireshark Basics. In the previous video, we covered topics like the tool overview and we looked at the packet details and the different layers of the packets and we also solved some questions. So now, let's move on to the part 2. We are going to see task 4, which is packet navigation. The first topic is packet numbers. Wireshark calculates the number of investigated packets and assigns a unique number for each packet. We can see that in the packet list pane. These numbers are very useful and we will see why. Next up is go to packet. We can use this option to go to a particular packet using its packet number. Click on go and then go to packet and tap the packet number. Let's say 46. And here we can see it has highlighted packet number 46 for us. Next topic is find packets. We can find packets by packet number and packet content. With the help of this, we can find different packets of interest. Click on edit and find packet. And we can see a new tab open. Here we can provide different values like a hex value, a string value, or a regular expression to find. And we can search that in a particular pane, for example, a packet list pane, packet details, or a packet bytes pane. We want to search in the packet details pane. Now let's say we want to search for a string, I'm gonna type in HTML and click on find. Now we can see that it has found a packet for us and that packet is highlighted in the packet list pane and the particular string is also highlighted over here. Obviously there is not only one packet, if I click on find again, it will take me to another packet that has HTML string in it. And in this case, it is packet number 1797. Let's move on to the next topic which is mark packets. Let's say we find a packet very interesting and we want to highlight it from different packets. So we can mark it and it will look different from other packets like highlighted in black. Next topic is packet comments. Similar to packet marking, commenting is another helpful feature for analysts. You can add comments for particular packets that will help the further investigation. This feature can be used to point out suspicious or important points for other layer analysts. If I select a packet and right click on it, we can see the packet comment option. So I'm just going to type in 404 because this is a 404 file not found. But yeah, you get the example. Next thing is exporting packets. Capture file contains thousands of packets. But let's say we want to export some specific amount of packet because we find it kind of suspicious. We can do that with the help of export packet option, which is in the file menu. Click on file, export specified packets. And here we can give it a file name. And over here in the packet range section, we can see it will export only marked packets or first to last marked. And we can also provide range over here. So as we can see how marking packets can be really useful. I'm gonna name it test and save it in the desktop folder. I'm gonna move to the desktop folder and here we can see the test pcap ng file. Let's try opening this in Wireshark. Since there was only one marked packet, we can only see one packet over here. Notice we can also see the packet comments. Okay, now let's get back to our exercise.pkpng file. Next topic is export objects. We can use this option to discover shared files and save them for further investigation. And it says that exporting objects are available only for selected protocol like HTTP, SMB, TFTP, IMF, and DICOM. Click on file and then export objects. And then it will show you all the packets over here and then the files 
that were sent. For example, we can see download.html file over here with its sites and host name and also the packet number. So these are the files that were shared over HTTP protocol. I can also save this but I'm gonna close this for now. Next is time display format. So by default Wireshark shows the time in second since beginning of the capture. The common usage is using the UTC time display format for a better view. And we can do that by going to the view menu, then time display format, and UTC date and time of the day. And we can see the time has been changed now. You can see year, month, and date, and then the time in hour, minutes, and seconds. Next is expert info. Wireshark also detects specific states of protocols to help analysts easily spot possible anomalies and problems. So there are different color for info. For example, blue is used as information on usual workflow. Red is problems like malformed packets. Yellow are warnings and cyan is notable events like application error codes. Go to the Analyze option and click on Expert Information. It will open a new tab. Uh, let's zoom it. And here we can see the protocols that is used and the summary and the number of warnings which is 1636. We can also see details for a particular option. So these are the number of warnings which is a lot. Seems like there is no errors or malformed packets. I'm gonna close this for now. Time to solve some questions. First question is search the R4W string in the packet details. What is the name of the artist one? We can do this with the help of find packet option. I'm gonna click on edit and then find packet. And the string was R4W. And you want to find in the packet details, so I'm gonna leave it as it is and click on find. And here we can see the highlighted line and the string we wanted to search for. So we can also see the name of the artist one. Second question is go to packet tool and read the comments. Click on go and then go to packet in the packet number is 12. So I'm gonna click on go to packet. And here it is using a TCP protocol. If I open the packet comments, it's written go to packet number 39765. Look at the packet details pane, right click on the JPEG section. Okay. I'm gonna click on go and again search for the packet. Here we are. I'm going to open JPEG file interchange format. I'm gonna right click over here and export packet bytes and I want to save it in the desktop as JPEG. I forgot to record the whole packet comment but in the packet comment it's telling us to decode the MD5 sum of this exported bytes. We can do that in Linux with the help of MD5 sum command and then the name of the file which is JPEG and here is the string next question is there is a txt file inside the capture file find the file and read it what is the aliens name we don't know where that txt file is but we can find it using the export objects option in the file menu below we can see text filter i want to search for .txt files so i'm going to type in .txt and hit enter and it's pointing to this packet highlighted for us using HTTP protocol, of course, and the packet number is 4267. We can see um, alien over here, and it's written packet, but some words are broken over here, so we need to export this packet to analyze this in Linux. So. Again, in the export objects, I'm going to select this packet and save it in my desktop folder. I'm 
I'm gonna cut this file and here we can see it's written packet master so that's the alien name next question is look at the export info section what is the number of warnings and we already see that it's 1636 but if you forget I can do this again just go to the analyze then export information and we can see the warnings over here is 1636.